So we ended up 860, which is good. You know, I mean, it's a cash on cash return of 32% uh, year over year for the years that they're paying. You know, when they, when they uh, pay it off, it's still 16% return. Boy, I didn't know if I was going to look at you, if I should, boy, I don't know if I should be kicking you out of my county right now. If I should be calling the sheriff and kicking you out of my county. He said something to that effect, but he didn't say it with that accent. I'm definitely exaggerating. <laughs> John Fedger with mobilehomeinvesting.net. Uh, if you like those introduction clips that you just saw, then you're going to like the rest of this video most likely. Uh, we're talking about mobile homes attached to private land, and they don't nearly get enough credit or do on this YouTube channel, but they're great. Normally, we start with mobile homes in parks, just the rectangles. Then we sort of graduate or people, you know, they, they do a couple mobile homes in parks. Then they want to do some mobile homes attached to private land. I mean, after all, that is the land. That is the real estate. Uh, and mobile homes attached to private land are most mobile homes out there. 75% roughly of mobile homes in existence, the people that own the homes own the land. Whether that's like five, five acres or more, or it's just one little tiny eighth of an acre. Uh, and those deals are wonderful. They, they really are. They're some of my longest paying notes. Uh, obviously, they're paying 30 years, 35 years or more to own the mobile home and the land. Or, you know, 20 years or 15 years, but some of the longest paying notes for sure. Uh, mobile homes on land, uh, there are more sellers like I talked about. There's more moving parts. There's just more variables. There's underlying loans, there's surveys, there's taxes or more, ta uh, more taxes. Uh, the profit is typically more substantial as well. Yes, you're paying for insurance and taxes like I mentioned, and there might be more debt service monthly. Uh, but there is more profit uh, initially with a move-in fee from your buyer uh, monthly. And then also when you sell the home at the end, there's typically more profit. There are more buyers. Mobile home, there's plenty of buyers that want to buy inside of parks. There's even more buyers that want to buy on, pri on private land for payments, for cash. There's also more lending programs. Bank Banks have more lending products for mobile homes on land versus in parks because the land is collateral as well. Uh, the seller has more options as well. They have more time before they have to either sell their home or the bank forecloses on them. If a mobile home in a park, if the, the, buy, the owner of that mobile home can't pay, within a month or two or three, that person is evicted from that space inside the community. Well, the bank in most states takes a couple months or longer to foreclose on you. Let's say if a mobile home on land did have an underlying loan. You don't always need more cash to get into these deals. Something I realized on my second mobile home, which was a mobile home on private land, is that the sellers, the mobile home sellers that get themselves into trouble inside of mobile home parks, which let's face it, we all have gotten ourselves into trouble in, in, the, in the past. Uh, those folks own single family homes. They own mobile homes on land. They own millionaire, um, million dollar homes. People get themselves into trouble for a variety of reasons, whether they own a home in a park or a mobile home on a piece of land. So not, more, not always cash is needed. Um, we, can arrange, we can arrange owner financing or seller financing with sellers. Uh, that's something I did want to mention because when you're getting started, you don't have to buy every single mobile home on land. In fact, you can focus on mobile homes in parks and then the ones on land. We'll talk about some strategies here that you can either capitalize on yourself or you can pass it all uh, on and just go after you know the deals that fit your criteria. If you only have five thousand or ten thousand to get started, well then you're only going to buy mobile homes on land that allow you to get into deals with only five or ten grand or substantially less. And I'm not talking about going to banks, I'm talking about either purchasing the home subject to the underlying debt, structuring seller financing with the seller, setting up an option or a land contract, purchasing the home with payments, um, not with the bank involved. So we've talked about all that long enough. I want to go right over here and then I want to talk to you about uh, what's under this sheet real quick. Then I want to jump into an interview with JR, who is probably the bulk of this video, which is a really great interview. When you have a mobile home on private land, you can do a number of things with it. You can buy the mobile home with the land together. The mobile home and the land are already joined together and you can sell everything. You can sell it all for cash or you can sell it all for payments. You take a big move-in fee or down payment and you take the rest on payments and you sell for 30 years. I mean, that home and land together, you sell that on payments for 30 years or more. 
or you can buy and uh, buy the complete mobile home and land together. Uh, we're gonna sell the mobile home for cash or for payments, and then you can rent the land forever. And another thing you can do is you can buy the mobile home and land together. They're already hooked up. Somebody was living in that mobile home before, and you can rent everything. You say, I'm gonna keep the mobile home in the land and I'm gonna rent everything. I just want a renter and I'll, I'll deal with the toilets. This strategy, you're not dealing with toilets. You're selling the home for cash or payments and you're renting the land. Or you can buy vacant land. And this is actually what JR does. He buys the vacant land, which is really cool. Um, and then he adds the utilities. Are the utilities available? Which utilities are available? You add utilities. Now you could also buy vacant land that's not really vacant. A mobile home was there and you, you pull it off or it was destroyed by a fire. So you can add another mobile home there, but the utilities are already connected. Somebody already did that for you because there was a home there. Or in JR's case, in the, in the uh, case study that you're gonna just uh, watch in just a couple minutes, uh, he had to add utilities. It was a completely vacant, bare piece of land. And uh, add mobile homes, you can add RVs or attract RVs. You don't have to add them yourself. You can have buy the vacant land and then attract RVs. Once you get mobile homes there, do you rent them or do you sell them? You can also subdivide the land potentially, and you could potentially make it into a park. That's less possible, but I did want to mention it because it was a possibility. But if you have this vacant land, the options, they're, they're not endless. Uh, and it, of course, has to be legal, and there's more red tape with some ways versus others. But I do want to get you thinking that you do have options. Now, with many of these strategies, you are out money before you're making money. Uh, that is different with this last one when it comes to wholesaling, because you can just find these properties. You can find the land. You can find the mobile homes uh, that are on the land. You can get it under contract. You can assign the contract to somebody and make a few thousand dollars or more in between. Now, these are different strategies when it comes to mobile homes attached to private land. And there's a couple others, but these are the main ones. What JR decided to do was buy land. And this is what he bought, essentially, I don't know if you can see this, I think you can. It's like five parcels of land. But he has to add water and waste and the foundations and electric and permits and permission and get the mobile homes there and then get buyers there and renters there and add gas if that's a potential. And all of this costs JR roughly twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars to add all of this to one lot, including the lot, including the land itself for twenty-five to to thirty thousand, and is selling one of the mobile homes on payments for roughly that amount. So recouping all of his costs for everything just in the mobile home itself. And then once he sells that mobile home, has forever money, is renting the land month after month after month. And then he can, if the people ever pull the home off, he can just put another one there and sell it again. He owns the land. Um, so we're gonna talk about the good, the bad, what JR had to overcome. This next video clip is about 45 minutes. It's me and JR talking about getting this land, everything from the very beginning of when he got started in real estate, uh, all the way up to what it's become now. Uh, and the, the hurdles that he had to overcome. And the next 45 minutes, it's not the most exciting, but it is an in-depth look, uh, detailed into what JR had to do, overcome hurdles, the goods, the bads, uh, would he keep doing this, advice for newer people, a cost breakdown uh, of what JR had to uh, go through and spend. So we're gonna talk about a lot of that here coming up. Uh, if you have time, please watch it. Uh, if you don't have time right now, kind of come back and watch it later. If you have any interest though of what we discussed, go ahead and watch it. Uh, Thanks so much. I'll talk to you soon. I am so very honored. Seriously, JR, thank you so much for being here um, uh, to talk about mobile homes, to share a oh, little yeah. bit about what's what's been going on in your in your in your business. Thank you, John. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah. I'm honored. Let's get some of the uh, initial rigmarole kind of stuff out of the way. Uh, how long have you been investing in mobile homes? And then before mobile homes, what were you doing or How's your real estate experience been? Oh yeah, absolutely. So mobile homes, not too long. And thanks to you, my friend, uh, you've been a major influence, major help. Um, but really I've, so I've been, uh, my background with real estate, I started in 2012 and I read that book. I don't know if you read it, but rich dad, poor dad. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that just kind of rewired your brain about thinking about money. Uh, we'd, I'd moved to Austin and, uh, my, you know, I got a pay raise as an accountant and, my wife's like, well, let's go over, move over to Oak Hill and buy this big house. And, and I was like, but I read Rich Dad Poor Dad. I was like, you know what? I feel like um, 
that extra di discretionary income will no longer be discretionary. It's all going to go towards this mortgage, right? And maybe we should save up and buy investment properties or something that cash flows. And, um, but yeah, so she, she actually, thank God she had like an epiphany where, um, she found out about Robert Kiyosaki as well. She started reading, she read the first book and then she read the second book, the cash flow quadrant and, and so on. Just read, we actually bought like a ton, but she was on fire for that, which was good. Like our mindsets were primed. Um, it was in 2011, 2012, there's a, a local Texas club called Lifestyles Unlimited, which is an incredible organization. In fact, I'm a part of the team right now. Uh, I help kind of help with single family side of things. And anyway, that, that taught me uh, about um, actually doing it. So Rich Dad Poor Dad is more, um, gives you the mindset, but doesn't give you the, the nuts and bolts on how to do something. Where Lifestyles, they hold your hand from start to finish in single family. And so I've been doing single family rentals since 2012. But you know, the, uh, in the, and there's still some decent deals out there. Don't get me wrong. And, and a lot of uh, our members now, they're buying excellent deals. But if I have met people in the, in the mobile home in the, uh, side of things that have just done very, very well. And, and um, in fact, uh, uh, you know, one of them I'd met sitting next to me in Lifestyles, um, it, I didn't, you know, it didn't look like he had two pennies to rub together, but it turns out he's a multimillionaire in West Texas, you know? And it's just like, no way, this is amazing. So um, <laughs> I ended up uh, talking to him more and I just, he would come to a lot of our lifestyle events. I'm still a huge believer in single family rentals. I have a number of them and, you know, invest in them. Um, but, but I'd said, Hey, let me just interview. I want to kind of know about this a little bit more. So we went down to a gas station, just, he just, you know, it spilled the beans and I listened and, um, and I was like, I'd like to learn more. And I found you, man. And, um, that's when I really started getting serious about mobile homes is when I joined your program. Um, cause I know the power of a mentor. I mean, cause you know, that's, that's, that's kind of what I'm the role I'm playing now with lifestyles and, and with you in your specialized niche of mobile homes, that's, that's when I started. So it was last, yeah, last year. Um, and I'm trying to remember when I, oh, I should have done my research, John, but I think it was middle of the year. Um, I, I started, uh, uh, I bought land, I bought land in around, um, oh, I think it was, uh, uh, September ish, I think. So, or, or August, September, I ended up buying some land from you and, or not from you, but I, you know what I mean. So I bought, I bought the land and I don't know if you want me to segue into the story now. Like, I'm sorry, I'm kind of like taking this a different direction. Let's take, no, no, there's no direction. <laughs> sure. You're, I'm in the car. You're, you're driving. I'm just, yeah. Well, you know what I loved uh, the, the thing that's interesting about mobile homes is uh, there's different directions you can go with that, you know, buying in parks. Right. And, and, and you can, you can rent them out, you can do at least, you know, uh, sell it, you know, owner finance, that sort of thing. Or, at least own or whatever it is, uh, something that I, I'm really intrigued by the concept of not dealing with tenants, toilets, and trash. Although, it, you know, it's fairly easy. If you do it right, you get the right people. As you know, it's not a big deal, but still to mitigate calls and, and having to get us involved, I was more interested in um, kind of the owner finance side of things, or maybe at least to own or something like that, where they, they have pride of ownership in what they do. Um, but not only that, what really, what I, and you knew this from probably from the get go when we were talking, like I kept saying, I want the land. And, and the reason why I want the land is that is forever money to me, because once the home, uh, if you do it uh, in payments for someone to own the home, eventually that's going to, that well is going to go dry and you're going to have to find more deals, right? More properties. And, but when you own the land, that's forever money. And I'll always, I'll never sell the land that there'll always be lot rent, but how often will I get a call about, you know, the septic tank going out or something? Not very often, you know, whereas with the home, there could be a plethora of things they could call you about. So anyway, um, that's kind of the direction I went with all this. Did you have money to buy those outright or did you go through a bank? Is this something that somebody could buy without a lot of cash? Oh, right. It's, so this is where, um, of course you, you helped me a lot. Um, my other, uh, guy, the mobile home millionaire in West Texas, he, he said he buys in land. He likes land a lot. And he intrigued me. He said, listen, what you want to do is find the cheapest land possible. Right. And he, he owns land in the middle of nowhere. And he says, people will still rent from you still, you know, he, he actually only rents his mobile homes, which is interesting. He does some owner finance, but primarily rentals. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I, I was just scouring, just looking for land, looking for land, you know, in the area and, uh, ended up finding some fairly inexpensive land. Uh, you know, uh, one, 
what was it? 1.43 acres. Uh, I, I could sub, I'm not subdividing it, but I could put five homes on there. So I got a approval for five homes, five separate septics. And so it, you know, it all kind of worked out to about um, five, 5,000. And I paid 25 grand for that. So 5,000 just for the land cost, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Great. Broken down into each. Yeah, if you break it into possible. each each mobile home and septic together, so that okay. worked out well. Yeah, and the five, septic. Oh, I'm sorry. No, <laughs> five thousand. When I say that, like a, a total unit, um, the land was just five thousand. Uh, I found another. So septic was something I wasn't familiar with. I had shopped around for that. I found one for five thousand a piece, which is pretty good from what I've found. But it, it depends on soil type too, and this is a lot more sandy, and and you just got to call around. Like it's sort of like foundation. You know, I don't know about you, a slab foundation, you're going to get bids from like zero because they think it's level to like 50 peers and 20, 25,000 bucks or something ridiculous, right? So, sort of same with septic is what I found. Was this all done prior to you closing, like doing your due diligence oh, process? Oh man, absolutely, John. Absolutely. Okay. So I, and you probably got that sense for me, but I'm, I'm a little, like, I want to, I want to test everything. I want to make, um. I want to do my due diligence before I dive in. Um, and so I don't want to, I don't want to buy, buy any land, any homes, anything until I know I can, I can see this from start to finish. And in fact, I had a little bit of, uh, it was, it was kind of a roller coaster going through that process. I don't know if we want to take a deep dive into that with the County. I would love and, to. Well, I'd love yeah. to ask sort of what was a timeline. I, I will just say preface and say, if I, so, so I have two homes up right now, you know, and that we're partnering on, which is awesome. I'm very excited about. Um, there's three more that I'm going to do. Um, and I'm just kind of waiting to see what the market's doing right now with, with, uh, you know, with the, the Corona and the economy. Um, and I was waiting for May to see, was there going to be anyone who wasn't going to pay in the month of May, but everyone's paid, not a problem. And it's been great. So thank God for that. But if I had to do it start to finish now, uh, it would be probably under a month. So it's pretty quick because I already have um, the, the permit process approved. And even if I didn't have uh, the permit, septic permit of process approved, it wouldn't be long. Now that I know what I'm doing, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be long. And, I, and I sort of, I, I've been able to test the market and I know something that works now, you know, now that we have two that are up and running. And we could definitely dive into the numbers as well. As well. <clears throat> this, this piece of parcel, this parcel that you have, is it a rectangle where you can just cut them up like where you just can make the easy road, everyone has their own yeah, access? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. And, and it's in the, yeah. Please. Yeah, it's it, where I'm at, it's, it's surrounded by three roads, which is nice. So, oh, wow. so all the land, you know, it's just like at the, a U-shape. It's just an intersection of a property. I have like half a city block or something, you know, it's equivalent, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Did you know how many homes you could put there before talking to the county? Oh. So I thought when I first saw it and I bought it because, because my, my one, you know, what West Texas mentor guy, he, uh, he was saying, look, you want to put as many as you can, as, as many as you possibly can on that land. That's what he does. Right. And if you look at some of these mobile home parks, they're crammed together. You know, you have barely enough for a car to fit in between. Right. So I'm thinking I'm going to do the exact same thing. I was thinking, John, I'm going to put like 30 of them on. <laughs> right. That's what I was thinking, but Oh man, I got, got shot down quick. And you know, if I was to give anyone advice, like the number one thing you need to do is to call if you're in Texas and maybe other states as well, but you need, like in Texas, we have an environmental director for each county. And apparently a couple years ago, um, septic tanks and, and sanitation got managed by the state. It's not like a county um, power anymore. It's a state power. And so it's, it's a little bit more um, standardized, I guess. And yeah, they're a lot more strict and you cannot put that many homes together. I can't feed more than one home into uh, a septic tank. You know, it's one home, one septic, that sort of thing. Cause I was trying to think, okay, you won't let me put 30 on there. I'll put 10. And they're like, no way. Okay. Well the one, however many you will let me on, I want to have one septic tank. And, and they're like, Nope, not going to happen. So you got to play ball uh, with the, with the County. And of course the state regs that regulate that as well. So you, you got the home under, you got the land under contract. Did, where, did, you, did you give the seller asking price or you still negotiated? I did that? in this case. Okay. I was going to negotiate. I was trying to go down to 17, but they just weren't having it. But this, we're, in this particular area, just the, it was all a, a big block of land, which I liked. It was already cleared off. Um, 
it just I liked the appeal to it. So I wasn't too uh, upset about that. And, you know, it was 5000 per per little parcel of land, if you think of it that way, with the mobile and septic. I was like, that, from what I've heard from you and, you know, and just around that, that sounded like a pretty good deal for land. So I was like, okay. Then I, then I, and that was the one thing, John, which you've been so good about is helping me gauge what's a good deal and not, because unfortunately there's not really an MLS for mobile homes. You know what I mean? And, and I, of course there's land, but at the same time, I just want to know like, what, what would you consider a decent deal? You know, I want to, I want to come in realistically uh, when I'm, when I'm doing these things. So. And I know that we talked about that, but you have, I mean, you're, you're out all of these expenses. You're out for, for the acquisition of the land yep. and then the septic and the permits mm -hmm. and any arc. Um, do you have to get any surveys done or any engineers? Oh, yeah, out I there? did. I didn't need a survey. Some of the, so how it works is, um, Sanit you, you, you need a sanitarian who is in your state or, or even like a septic professional to draw up a, a, a septic plan that you're going to submit with the county. And some of the ones I talked to were just insistent I need a survey. Others were like, hey, you know, it's okay if you don't. Uh, I, I, I can deal with it. I kind of know the area. And, you know, I know some markers. But for me, I just got a sep uh, uh, um, survey done. And uh, uh, I think it who was it West Star. I think I was telling you about. They they were like crazy cheap. I was going with one of some of the ones I know that are cheap, like Ameris surveyors. But um, West Star was crazy crazy cheap. Um, it's like eight or nine hundred bucks to survey those five plots of land, you know, wow. and yes. and put up survey markers and everything. Oh. Um, and and that was good. So I I put up all the survey markers. That's how I did it originally. I put up survey markers, um, and then I got the septic done. And the septic, because I had the survey markers, and then I put the homes on. So it's I, the, really the septic guy said, "Hey, it would have been a heck of a lot easier if I would have known where the homes were going to be." So next time I'll probably just put a home out first, then put the septic. But it still all worked out pretty well. So with these next three, that's what you're going to put on. You're going to put the home there first, then put in a septic, then the power the power pole. Yeah, or I mean, all of them in house number one for sure, and then everything else it could be all at the same time. I'm sure I could, you know, I could get it done. Got to get a water meter in, you know, which uh, 1500 per tap and, uh, you know, in the, in the, in the power pole, I think I was like, I'm trying to remember what I paid. Like it was like a thousand to 1500. Do you have a list or do you have a breakdown of the different departments that you, that you've called uh, within the, within the County where you were to, in order to, you know, line up all this. Okay. Who, so who all the players, with? all the players. Yeah, uh, all the players, I think, number one, again, for me, if I was doing this again, or for anyone out there, if you want some advice, if you're, if you're going to do this play where you're going out in the county, which keep in mind, it's, it's a little slower in the county than in a big metropolitan area, you know, so there's not as much, I had to sit on this a couple months for some of the, for one of the properties, but it did sell, you know, we, we discussed that and, and, the, but the holding costs, that's the beauty, so freaking low with uh, mobile homes, right? I mean, that, that's what's amazing. Um, my holding costs, if I didn't have to pay utilities, it would have been like 15 bucks a month for taxes and insurance. Cause I just have liability insurance only, you know, I don't have a uh, uh, recovery cost of the home cause it's so cheap, you know? It, um, but the players would be septic. Um, number one, if I would find out if there's no restrictions and you can put mobile homes. Okay. So you'd call the County about that, I guess maybe County clerk or I would maybe I'm trying to think who I would call. I just knew this was unrestricted. It was advertised as unrestricted. Okay. The and I saw maybe. a lot of mobile homes out there anyway, yeah. you know, uh, septic would be, uh, well, the next thing I do actually is look and see if you have power poles down the road. If you have power poles then that's a good sign that about electrical, if you don't just keep bear in mind, that could be fairly expensive to get uh, more power to go down the road where you're at. The, and, sit, the city's not wouldn't, wouldn't pay or the County wouldn't, the electric no. company wouldn't pay for that. No, no. Okay. And, okay. and, um, the power lines and they're like 300 feet apart for the, for the power lines. And if you had to go another 300 foot, it's like, uh, uh, 10, uh, 10 bucks, uh, a linear foot, I think, or something. So I oh. think you're, so you pay like 3000 bucks for another 300 feet. So, uh, yeah, definitely look into that. The second, the, the other thing is to look for water lines, make sure there's water lines, call whatever water line, uh, utility providers out there and just make sure that they're out there. Um, now what's, and these are, I'm just reminded of all these um, hurdles I had to come over. Like one was they wouldn't, the water utility company would refuse to talk to me unless I had a 911 address. 
you know, a 911 address means like a, if you don't have an address out in the county, that's what they mean by 911 address. Like one, two, three Main Street, you need a 911 address on your street. And because I never heard 911 address until I started looking into this. And uh, anyway, that was kind of a hassle. Like I had to um, have a 911 address. I was like, hey, look, I don't, this is raw land. There is no 911 address. And like, well, we can't help you. So it was a little of that I had to help overcome. I had to have the seller get a 911 address on her property, you know, get a hold of the county and have them do that and then check on the utilities. And So while you're going through your due diligence process, that was a requirement that was, or yeah, that was for the, before for you, water, before for the you utility company. Okay. Yeah. Oh, for me. Yeah. Like I'm okay. not going to do anything unless I know all the costs. Good. You know what yes. I mean? Like, woo, okay. don't want to jump into something and realize it's a bad move. Right. You know, for example, someone may have bought some land that's too small and you can't get approved for septic. Well, now you're really kind of up the creek. You just paid for land and you're not going to be able to put a home on there most likely. Or they'll make an exception for you. The state may, but it's going to maybe be more expensive. It's going to be a septic tank where uh, it, it, they have to, um, it's a con totally contained septic where you have to have it serviced every couple of weeks, you know, and get it drained, sucked out. Every couple of weeks. Something like that. That's Something if you, like that. that's if you didn't have a leach field. Uh -huh. And so a leach field is where it just, it evaporates to the, to the earth or in the, in the ground. So just these things you got to look into. So I, I made sure I covered all my bases. Um, you know, I got under contract as well with an option period. I want to kind of lock it up. You know, I always, I obviously did that as well, but during that time, I'm just making sure and I'm communicating with the seller. Um, the good thing is I knew the seller wasn't too, maybe tech savvy because I don't think they advertised anywhere and they just had like broken signs that were laying on their property that nobody was paying attention to. Right. We had to like find little pieces of the sign, make out the number and guess the area <laughs> code. So, so I, I wasn't too worried that they're going to, you know, sell it to someone else. Is that how you found the property by dri by driving by? I actually put out bandit signs, you okay. know, like, like in your program, we discussed pro uh, appropriate ways to do that. And someone called, about something totally unrelated. It's a neighbor out there and he's like one of my buds. So he, he's been super duper helpful. Got me in contact. I know all the neighbors out there now and, you know, and, and got me in contact with handyman out there. So it all, it all, he's, he's amazing. That's excellent. Yeah. Which one of the, how did you, how did you overcome that night, that nine one one issue? Oh, well, just had, I just had that seller, the seller. I said, look, I cannot move mm -hmm. forward unless you get nine one one addresses. And, and I was testing the limits out there. I told her to get 10 911 addresses because I want to put 10 houses, one on each of the kind of official lots that they have. They're all like 50 by 125s. Or, um, and, and anyway, that, <laughs> that's when I got on the radar with the county. And that's when things got kind of awkward, I guess you could say, with the county. Uh, uh, so I got my 911 addresses. I confirmed that there was uh, water out there. So now I'm like, okay, everything sounded really good. And you got 10 parcels that I remember you thought Plus, that at that point that you had 10 parcels and you could put 10 homes. Yes. Okay. And, to, and legally the legal boundary lines out there, it is like 10 separate parcels, all, all not legally separated. It's all one lot. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and I pay it as one big parcel of land, but there's sub, it's kind of like secondarily subdivided with those 10. So I was going to put 10 mobile homes out there. Right. That was my plan. Uh, I was originally thinking 30 or something crazy, but then I was like, okay, one per lot. That's fine. And um, so then I went into the county and I met the 911 lady and she just kind of looked at me. I mean, this is like a smaller county, right? And she's kind of giving me that look like, who do you think you are, right? And hey, the county commissioner wants to meet with you because I was going to meet with him. Actually, okay. So I went out there with the, with my sanitarian because I was like, okay, let me meet. I, I'm paying a guy to do my plans. And so he's going out there to meet me um, and he's in the county over um, and, uh, and uh, the, the, the tenant, um, environmental director, I met with him. Um, then the 911 address lady, she's very nice. She were friends now. Like I'm, I'm buddies with everyone. And she said, Hey, look, the County commissioner wants to be on it. And so we all sat in a room and the County commissioner says, <laughs> I, I'm going to, uh, 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 exaggerate a little bit, but he's like, boy, I didn't know if I was going to look at you, if I should, boy, I don't know if I should be kicking you out of my county right now. If I should be calling the sheriff and kicking you out of my county. He said something to that effect, but he didn't say it with that accent. I'm definitely exaggerating. <laughs> All right. But, but he did say that to me to, to, and, and, and those, um, in, in similar words. So I was like, what, like, why? And he's like, apparently some other investor from 
you know, the Austin area was out there and, and it, um, just gave him a bad taste in his mouth, like what was going on, what he was trying to do in the area. And so anyway, we talked for a long time and um, sat, sat at the table with the environmental director, the county commissioner, and my sanitarian, who's supposed to be on my side, but he's kind of a, he's trying to, he's kind of like a yes man, I found out, you know, so he's just sucking up to those guys, because he's, he's known him for a long time, he's kind of been in the same position as the environmental director, and he didn't want to lose face or whatever, I don't know, I was a little disappointed. So I left there feeling a little deflated, because long story short, we were out there talking a long time, I got a lot of history about that land, and the uh, county commissioner was kind of like telling this, the, the um, environmental director, like, hey, isn't that a law that you can't have more than one mobile home per half acre, right? And so this is not going to be allowed to have more than three out there, right? And remember, I'm thinking I want at least 10. And so that really deflated my sales, like big time. And I'm, now I'm thinking, well, now I don't think the numbers are going to ret return well for me because I want at least maybe a 30% cash on cash. And this is going to kill my numbers. And um, so I was, I was feeling really deflated. Um, and, and what they said was true, but partly true. And so they were, they were trying to not let me do what I want to do. They didn't want me to be so aggressive at that time. All right. So, um, but I knew that out there as I drove around, that there were plenty of properties on like about a third of an acre, not a half acre, that had a, a, a house and a septic tank. And so I was just like, I, I called back my sanitarian later you know, later in the next week or something, I was like, look, I've, cause I've been calling other people out there and finding out I've been doing more due diligence. And he said, but I should be able to get a septic tank out there. Everyone else is, this doesn't seem fair. I feel like they're just kind of uh, picking on me cause I'm an investor or whatever. And, and he just, and all of a sudden he flips switches like, oh, well, you're right. And you know, that's precedent set. And we, they should be uh, allowing that to go through. With the, with the septic tank on on you know to have five homes out there, um, so I uh, I, uh, I I told them let's just move forward let's let's try this out I'm gonna pay you it's three hundred dollar per septic plan I'm gonna call their bluff and so I submitted all five plans I paid fifteen hundred bucks that was the one money I did pay up front you know um, and and called and just called their bluff and they approved all five like with no issues so I was like all right you're not gonna you're not gonna bamboozle me here or snow me or whatever I'm gonna you know because I just didn't feel as fair I was very very upset um, at the time but but then you know it all worked out and I knew you know they're all good people I'm still friends with them now and the county, county commissioner he has a very caring heart I've talked to him before he helps to manage the roads out there I've actually called him when my buddy uh, who who got me the land out there he's like Joe you need to call the county commissioner and you need to uh, have him come out and grate the roads." so he, anyway I called him and because you get a little momentum on the county and they'll grate the road. So I helped with that. And they're all good people. So Sorry, I'm rambling a little bit. No, but it's so true. You know, you would think as an outsider, if you've never dealt with the county or the commissioner or the city, you can think that, oh, everyone's by the book. The rules are what they are. And nobody has an ulterior agenda because mm -hmm. everyone just, you know, every, like you said, he's a good guy. We want what's best for our neighbor. And so, but what's best for your neighbor? Again, people just it kind of has an agenda, like putting 10 homes out there, no way. And then he made it maybe tried to scare you into maybe just two or three homes or to scare you off the project oh, completely. Yeah. You could have gave up a thousand times along this journey. Oh yeah. And now that you are all working together, are you going to be buying more plots of land? Are you going to be oh, doing absolutely. this more? And this just helped you. I mean, you, now you feel like oh, you yes. have the, yeah. You'll keep, keep yeah. I, I don't feel like I could get snowed is the thing you know um i mean when you do it and this is how it was with single family john everyone is always a little apprehensive on your first one you may be a little nervous because you've never done it right and um but once you've done it from start to finish and you have a mentor man i can't tell you how important having a mentor uh is well once you've done it start to finish then you kind of get the bug then you're like oh i got this and it gets easier and that's just how it is and then and you just want to keep buying another one you know Oh, I, I, I know. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know. So, Do you, so, so absolutely. You, and I already have like other leads, I guess, for land. You know, I'm just kind of keeping them up my sleeve. You know, I'd hook you up, John. So if you now you, <laughs> going back to the same deals that we're talking about, you now have two mobile homes. You've brought the mobile homes on. You've mm -hmm. sourced them from 
outside of your land. You've brought them on. They were, they were older used mobile homes. Yep. Yep. Um, and your, your strategy is, which I think this is wonderful. Your strategy is to sell the home on payments, yep. rent the land indefinitely. What's the bottleneck now with just expanding this i mean there's land everywhere what's the bottleneck with you with you know not just doing 20 more in the next you know, okay couple, good point. Couple, we can we months. can dive into numbers um really it's uh, if i was the federal reserve and i had a printing press this would definitely be possible this would be all that currency but uh but no i don't um I, I, these deals on average are about uh i, I did tally up the numbers are about thirty thousand. I was hoping to get closer to 25. Um, and, and of course there's lessons learned, you know, you know, there always is. Uh, now, and I was telling you, John, I was like, gosh, you know, cause the folks that buy in the parks, they're getting like hundred percent return year one. And me, I'm more like a 30 to 33%, you know, it's about 32%. But really uh, it's different because there's more costs involved. I mean, if I only included the purchase price, which I only paid 1900 for one of them, it was almost livable. And in the rehab, you know, if you, if you take that together, sure, I would have gotten it back if I was in a park. Absolutely. hundred percent, probably first year. Um, but with moving, uh, there's a lot more costs. Moving or is an, is a very expensive cost. And, and I knew going into these two, John, that this is a learning experience. I know there's going to be things I'm going to learn from this. I'm going to do better. You know, when I'm going, I just knew that. So I know that the next time it's going to be, I'm going to see how I can cut costs, how I can be more efficient. <clears throat> so like, so yeah, like moving, I don't know if you want me to break down a little oh, bit that, of the numbers. That'd be great. Yeah. What show, what, what made you do two properties that, you know, do these first two, why not just do one or three? Uh, I just, I just wanted to dive in. I was like, let's just, I felt two, I felt comfortable with two. Oh. I got to, you know, I talked to a septic guy. I was like, look, I got five available. What's the best price you can offer me if I give you multiple? And he said five grand for septic. I was like, okay, I'll give you two now. And we'll just see how it goes and then I'll give you some more later. So I got the two septics in um, and the first home was 1900 bucks. Now the rehab with moving, there were some costs on top when you do move, you know, like uh, things can break, you know, windows can break, that sort of thing. Um, but my overall rehab, I actually looked at it. It was, it was a little higher than what I expected. I'm going to get tighter. I was working some handy. I, I had tough getting my guys out. You know, because it's such a long drive. I'm driving out a ways. And um, so I used some local handyman guys. And it just it started adding up. It just started adding up. So I probably spent, and I just had to fix, like, it is the, the most redneck fabulous uh, air condenser unit, like for industrial, like an industrial building, commercial building that they put on the side of the home. And I kept it. I think it's awesome. And so oh, that, the, mo the only problem is the motor went out, right? So that's 680 bucks. Um, and so my total rehab withholding costs, I think was about 8,700. Uh, so 1900 purchase price, 8,700 for rehab, uh, to move it was about 40, 4,255. So about 40, 4,300 skirting. I actually paid for like high quality skirting. I, one of my friends is a roofer. I was like, do you got any extra roofing materials? And he had like, he did have some that were never used. It looked great. It's like super sturdy. Ended up paying him to do the job. You know, so that was uh, twelve hundred bucks uh, with, with cheap materials. materials. With cheap material, yeah. Oh wow! Because wow. it was it was basically he had it left over, need to get rid of it. So it was a fire sale type thing. But I it was recommend a, that a corrugated metal who, or yeah, cor like yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. It's thick. It's for roofing, and so it's very very high quality. It looks beautiful. So I'd, that's a definitely a golden nugget tip. I'm sure you probably already shared it with with on one of your videos, but it's a, with good, roofers. Thank you for that tip. Get with roofers. Yeah. Golden nugget, brother. And you would just and, ask them for any spare or leftover or yeah. just what your, what your purposes are. Yeah, scrap. Like, hey, okay. you got any extra? Just as long as it, you know, as long as it doesn't look too crazy, the different combinations of the metals, it's, it could work. Did the county have any requirements on that? You have to have it a certain material. I know parks would. They would say you oh. can only use certain something. Mm -mm. But, okay. No, that's the beauty about county too. Another benefit with county is less rules and restrictions. <laughs> Big time. So... You know, and in fact, a lot of these cities, they won't let them in if they're not younger than five years uh, old, the mobile homes. So, I mean, this model doesn't really work with, with in some places, some municipalities. So the water and electric hookup was about 1800 
total. And um, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think where I nestled in. Oh, here we go. So that was the cost of the mobile home. So the total cost of the mobile home was about seventeen thousand nine hundred, just rounded. Connected, moved, set. Not, no. Yes, a lot of that. Now the land costs. The land costs include. Um, so I capitalized some of the costs to it. So it'll be. Uh, let's see. So I did, I did uh, land plus the uh, utility pole, um, which, by the way, the, our, the, this, the electrical company, they did provide up to so many thousands of dollars for utility hookups. So you could have mm -hmm. a primary pole, which is the ones that you see off the road, and then you can have a lift line to have the power go over. Um, that's a secondary pole or a lift line. That's free. And the transformers free so really it was zero for electrical which is great but i had to pay for my meter mm -hmm. you know and it had to be up to regs and all that so five thousand for land i think um electrical and water i think a, a, a water hookup was 1500 um that's known as a tap yeah. fee you mentioned before yeah mm -hmm. okay septic was five thousand and then other Land related costs, uh, electrical, uh, I think it was 1700. I don't think I paid that much though. I have to double check minutes. But all in, I was 13,000 for approximately 13,200 for the cost of land. So all in for this, for this old 1970s home was 31,500 uh, for land and mobile home, everything, everything, including holding costs for the few months. Including though, I mean, these, these homes are in. When you bought them, they were in, these are all three bedrooms or bigger. Both of these are three bedrooms or bigger. And you, mm -hmm. and you fix them up and they're in nice livable shape that they're going to last. And you know, it was done right. Last another 20 or 30 years. So it's not, yeah. I mean, I just want to paint the picture that you don't have junk sitting there. You have somewhere where people oh, want to yeah, be. Absolutely. Everything's working. They're happy. You know. Absolutely. And I couldn't, I couldn't live with myself putting junk out there, you know, for anyone to buy, of course. And then the families, there's, you know, the families have been living in the, in the county out there. They've been there for generations. I got to know them very well. One of them, we picked a not, not a very conservative paint color initially. And, and um, it was peeling off because it was a little wet. We're like, oh, crap, we got to do this over. So I said to the neighbor, I said, I, um, I said hey, hey, ma'am, so what, what color would you like? You're going to be looking at this for the next... 10, 20 years, right? You know, or 30 years. So what color would you like? So she should just said sky blue. I was like, all right, sky blue it is. So that's what I did. I painted it sky blue. Um, Looks nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's good. It's pretty good. It came out well. It's a three bedroom, one bath. I would have gone, I don't think I'll ever do a one bath. I'll do two baths. I think from now on. And I want them to have closets. I'm going to look for ones. This is an older home. It just didn't have closets, but it's still, oh. it's still rented out. It just wasn't as fast. And this one was mostly rent ready. There's a second one I had, which was a younger home, 1997, a three bed, four bed, two bath. And it wasn't even finished. And I, that's what's weird about this model is you can uh, sell it with things being un, not finished. Now, everything's, everything's done except for the paint and the flooring, right? The walls and the flooring. That's, but everything else has to work. No odors, no holes, just like you teach. The appliances work, everything, just not the, the finish out. But you were, you were having people or you did have people say, stop what you're doing. Is that what you did? You well, stopped at the finish? Or? Exactly. Well, I finished okay. the first one, uh, the older home, and it was pretty much rent ready. It, it was on the market longer. And, and, uh, it, but I had a video and when I was doing an advertisement, the video was like, well, we got this other one behind here that will be available soon. And so someone just immediately was like, oh, I want the four bedroom, two bath. And that was the number one reason she wanted two baths and, you know, the extra bedroom. Did you have to edit the price at all with the one, like when you, in order to get it sold, did you have to change the price? That's what's interesting, John. Yeah. I started, I didn't know, obviously I'm the first one out there. No one else is in, out in the county doing this, you know, which is good. But at the same time, I don't really have a lot to compare it with. And I did meet some realtors out there. I was asking around realtors and, you know, what I think it could go for. And, and uh, of course, don't, you know, your numbers, it kind of seems like that 700, 800 range is what's typical. Um, maybe if you're closer to like a bigger metropolitan area, of course, you know, pay more if you're in the city, but, uh, so anyway, I tried, I think 900 just to try. I just want to see, am I getting any bites? And yeah, I did get some activity, a lot of people interested, no takers, no takers. And I, I hovered around like the 850 mark 
And uh, then I ended up dropping it to like 8.30 and left it there and someone took it. But they had two dogs, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna charge a pet rent. So that's gonna, now these are all payments. Um, just to be clear, the, any payment related to the house is, is a payment for the home, including the pet rent. It's not really rent, it's just a payment towards the home. But oh. I want them to pay more, right? And, I, and a pet deposit, you know, that's going towards the payment of the home. Kind of like a down payment on there. And, and I ended up saying, hey, just one month security deposit, which is also, you know, that the 400, mm -hmm. 410 bucks is towards the, the payment of the home. The 450 is the actual lot rent security deposit, you know, for a total of 860. This one I end up, they're paying 860 a month, which is, which is good. For, do you mind if I ask for how, for how many years? Oh, right. So I just said, um, it'll be about 63 payments. So about 25 grand, 25, 26 grand. Excellent. So just over yeah. five years and yeah. you, um, you sold this on payments. You have, is there anything that you are doing to make sure that they don't just drive away with the home or they, they, they don't just walk away. You know, they, they just don't pull this home off of your, off of your land. Well, first of all, I know how tough it is to move. So I sincerely doubt it. I doubt they would ever move. Uh, they would need like a house cat out there to move it actually. Cause it'd get stuck. Uh, that's the type of soil out there. But, so I don't, I'm not worried about that at all. Plus all, I know all the neighbors, like that's, what's great about this community is like everyone, they look out for each other. It's just a very special culture in this area that I found. And so I, I would get, probably get a couple phone calls before they got half a mile down the road, you know what I mean? Or not even that when they started hooking up the hitch, I mean, there's no way that it, they would be, get away with that. So I'm not worried at all about that. Do they have ownership? Do they have any insurance on this property or is that? Wait I encourage the them to get some uh, renter's insurance, and they, and they have one. One did, I, I, um, especially because they have animals, you know. And I want them. Um, my, I did ensure that my liability coverage included animals. You know, it won't cover vicious breeds. I mean, I just don't think there's any way around it. And unfortunately, most people have vicious breeds, so that's that's the downside. But um, but no, they, these people didn't have. They think uh, vicious breeds, so we were good there, and. Um, Although one, one has an emotional support animal, which you absolutely cannot deny. So, you know, yep. they, they, so that dog's in and it's just the way it is. I'm, I'm not worried about it. I think the courts will be sympathetic if anything happened because it's an emotional support animal. Do you ask for any sort of doctor, doctor's note? Oh yeah, okay. definitely. Yeah. It's gotta be legit. Right. And great point. Yeah. that can be a, uh, I've heard stories of people calling around trying to entrap landlords you know, mentioning that, you know, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm blind, you know, is that, a, you know, going to be an issue or can I come go see your property? Yeah. And, or, I've heard uh, of that as well. Yeah. How did you, how did you judge, okay, what to charge lot rent and what to charge for the home? Cause if they're, char if they're, you know, if it's eight, you said eight fifty is what you were asking. How did you know how to break that up? Oh, listen. So accordingly, think about it. I, I want that home to, to not be moved until they pay it off. So I have every incentive to get make the house payments lower and the lot pet rate rent as high as possible. So that's that's exactly what I did. I, I did 450 lot rent and the lower number around 400, 410. That is the, the house payments. But 450 for a third of an acre. I mean, that's still, you're still on par with reality. You're not, and 830 is still a normal amount for a three and four bedroom. So yeah, that's yeah. Okay. And this will be, yeah. And I started at 8 30, 8 40 with their, but I had, they ended up with the two dogs. I was just like, okay, another 20 bucks here, another 20 bucks there. And so we get it up 8 60, which okay. is good. You know, I mean, it's a cash on cash return of 32% uh, yes. year over year for the years that they're paying. You know, when they, when they uh, pay it off, it's still 16% return, you know, and it's 400. You know, you subtract insurance and property tax. I'm, I estimate that's going to be like 20 bucks a year. What's your feeling on when they do get paid off five plus years down the road? Are you hoping that the people pull them off or do you want them to stay or what's your, th have you? Not given necessarily. No, I'd be totally happy if they stayed. I mean, okay. it's forever money. It's easy. The law. Yeah. Have, right. You know, so it's, it's for, I'll get $430 a month forever until I have to change the septic leach field in like 30 years. If I ever need to like reposition it, which will only be a couple grand. I mean, it's like, it's a no brainer. It seems such easy money, like more and more and more passive income. You don't have to be a passive in some apartment complex where, you know, you're, you're not in control. You're in control 
and it's extremely passive. That's what I love about it. And it turns us into a home builder. When you drove past there a couple months ago, there was nothing there. Absolutely. I mean, we're not just buying a mobile, like we're as investors, even mobile home investors, we feel like we're, we have to play ball within the, the court that we're giving, which, which is the mobile homes in parks, which is the mobile homes already on their own land. And you said, uh, 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 didn't mean to give you the finger. Uh, oh. <laughs> you, you uh, said, you know, no, what, you know, I'm doing this third option here. And so you just created something from nothing. And it was the past le path less traveled. There were more hoops to jump through. And you have something that you want to continue doing now. Oh, yeah. Just again and again. I don't know. Oh, just... absolutely, John. Yeah, that's, that's exactly how I feel. I, um, and, 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 I, and I plan on expanding. So, yes, the cash flow will be cut in half. But I am planning on expanding. You know, I have some private money lenders who are interested in making a 7% return or something. It's like, okay, help me out. I'll, and then I'll expand, you know. Um, you uh, own the land. I mean, it's just you. Bottom line, yeah. when later on down the road, you give it to kids or you, I mean, it's just worth whatever or you city has expanded. That's oh. it. That's absolutely it. Yeah. You are. I love the idea of bringing in investors and then keep doing what you're doing on land because there's not many folks doing that. Um, oh, yeah. And the, we know that there's a need for homes that have to be moved. And we know that there's a need in the area and we know, you know, you're selling on payments. And so there's a need in all of that. And if the bottleneck is capital, then you know folks that would love to get a good month, you know, return on their money. Plus it's real land that you can back. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, They'd have a first lien position on everything, you know? So, and so you're, I mean, you, I would say for the folks that um, I've worked with or different mobile home investors, it's a stepping stone. You get, you start with mobile homes in parks and then for many folks, they want to eventually do some mobile homes on land. And then for some folks, they go to maybe the entire mobile home park and you mm -hmm. just, yeah. Or you can build your own mobile home a park. Little, or you can, <laughs> <laughs> five of them at a time. <laughs> That's ten right. of them at a time, yeah. That's awesome, JR. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll fix that. Okay. You so got it. thank you so much, JR. Thank you so much for being here. Um, any last minute advice you want to give folks? I know that we talked about these two deals. Um, any advice that you want to give folks? Maybe that are, it's like they're on the fence or they've, they, uh, yeah, I mean, you could have just given up so many times or been demoralized along, along the way. Um, oh, I know you help folks to begin with, with, yeah, any advice? I would, I would say build your team. You know, that's what we teach with lifestyles. And that's what you teach is just build your team and have a mentor. I mean, John, I, I know I, I thanked you and you must think, man, I didn't do much or I didn't feel like I did much, but you did just to help me mm -hmm. to help little things that'll hold me back with, with, with a lack of experience. Like what's an appropriate price or what, what for, for this rehab in this or to, for rent or for, I mean, it's just amazing um, uh, to, to have like, to have someone like you, you're saving me from years of hard knocks. And, and so I would recommend anybody have a mentor, you know, like you, John, I don't know how much you want to expand, but I hope you're, you're definitely worth every penny, brother. So I appreciate you. And um, yeah, man. And then I would say um, it's, it's take action every day. You know, there's a lot of great um, motivational speakers out there, you know, uh, Robert Q. Spock. Kiyosaki inspired me in a lot of ways. Like Tony Robbins, it's about taking action. And so I would say just every day, take action and to feed on this, you know, feed on the material. Um, it just gets you amped and, and pumped up and, uh, and, and just a step every single day. Yes. Open to most things and pushing forward every single day. Um, yes. Not afraid to, t yeah, not afraid to help others and learn new things and take action. Oh, yeah. Uh, JR, thank you so much. Hey, uh, yeah, thank you. Coming on here. Anything else uh, that yeah, I can ever do or you know, obviously nothing changes there, but let me know. Thank you again oh, for John. coming on here. Absolutely, and John. Oh, and we're not done. Home. I know I know. in the program it's the first two homes, but I hope to bless you in multiple other ways, man. With homes, I hope land or whatever. I know you for a long time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because I, I, mean, I really owe you a lot, brother. I mean, when I, th these mentor programs, if you think about it, the non, you know, the small cost for the mentorship program. Just think how many like uh, the, the the multiple fold increase you're going to get over that. A hundred fold increase potentially over time, just from what you taught. You know, it's it's amazing. And I would never have done this if I didn't know how to do it. You know, if I, it's too intimidating. And and I might just say that real quick, John, uh, is that 
that's the beauty with this mobile home space is you'll go to any local meetups and there could be like two, 300 people in the room. How many people are doing mobile homes? You might get like three people raise their hands, you know? So it's like, it's, it's amazing how this, this niche of investing is all around us. And I would just encourage anyone who's interested in mobile homes. Now, if you get a little interest in it, it's, I think Tony Robbins told me about the reticular activating system. You drive it, you just start look, you, now that you're thinking about mobile homes, you're going to be surprised how many mobile homes are down the highway. There's like an insane number of mobile homes everywhere. And it's always been here and everything's set up for it right now for like massive cash flow. It's all out there in front of you and it's all around you and it's been here this entire time and like 99% of investors aren't even looking at it. Thanks for sticking around to the very end. That was a great deal of information. Um, and you can see JR could have gave up a hundred times throughout this whole process and he didn't. Uh, all of the real estate investors, mobile home investors that are, that are successful, that have closed deal after deal after deal, uh, we could have given up hundreds of times through, through, throughout our career. Uh, so to, for, for, for you, the person that watched this entire video, the person that wants to learn and grow and expand their business and invest in more mobile homes on land or start adding more mobile homes on land to your portfolio, this is something that you can absolutely accomplish. Yes, it takes time and know-how and knowledge and capital and resources and doing it and having a plan uh, and not spinning your wheels, not wasting your money. If you have any questions or concerns, you can always email me. You can reach me at support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. That's support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. If you have any mobile home um, questions, you can always check out as well, mobilehomeinvesting.net for a lot of more free information. That's mobilehomeinvesting.net. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.